down here, ignore this section in the saved data sources because those are all private to me. So, and if you're using Tableau Public, uh, I don't believe you can connect to all of these different file types. I think you get Excel, maybe text file. That might be it actually. And then down in this, if you're using Tableau Public in this to a server section, you probably won't see anything at all. But if you're on Tableau Desktop, you'll see, you'll see many more. I'm on a Mac, but if you're on a PC, this whole list will, this whole space will probably be populated with different data sets. So these are all connectors that were built for people to quickly connect to each of these types of data sources. So for example, Snowflake, the database technology, we could connect to that or Google Sheets or something like that. But for us today, we're going to connect to a text file. So it, on the left-hand side where it says to a file, I want you to choose text file and navigate to wherever you saved that file. Let me close this. And then choose that file that uh, the emergency response incidents file. And I'll give, you, I'll give you a minute to go ahead and locate that. And once you locate it, hit open and I'll wait here for a second. So if you have a question or if you're, um, if you're stuck, just pop a question in the chat and somebody on the team will hop over and, and help you real quick. I'm just going to pause here for a minute. I have a tool somewhere that helps me highlight on my screen, but I can't remember what it's called. Here it is, loop. That's it. Uh, so, oh well. Okay, I'll do it later. That didn't work very well. Um, okay, sorry. I'm not messing everything up. So ignore me. So now that we have this emergency response incident down here at the bottom, you should see a preview of the data on the right-hand side. And over here on the left-hand side, you get some metadata about, about um, each of the columns. Let's start off by taking this incident type and we want to split this into two separate columns. So we have this hyphen that separates things, but uh, I think, so for example, if I look at, at this column right here, if you just focus on my screen for a minute, the one that says fire 1076, if we split this every time we see a hyphen, then we're gonna end up with too many columns here. So we only wanna take the, the part that's before the first hyphen. So what we wanna do is next to, uh, if you highlight this column, that just makes it a bit easier here, click this little triangle that's on the upper right of that column. And I want you to choose the option that says custom split. And it, you should see the screen that says, how should we split the data? And we wanna use the separator hyphen. So just type a hyphen in there. And we want to split off the first two columns. So we're gonna get just the first part and then a hyphen, and then we should only get two columns if I'm doing this right. And then click okay. And let's see, so where did it go here? So the columns are on the very right-hand side of our view now. And you can see we have utility, water main, et cetera. But it looks like something happened with this other one for the, uh, the 1076, so I'm not quite sure why that isn't working. It looks like it got rid of all the hyphens for some reason. Let's leave it for now. Um, it's a commercial high-rise fire. Okay, we'll have to see if there's other, if there's other ones that come up that are similar to that, we can come back in and fix that. So now that we have that, we can look through the rest of the, of the files. You'll see each of them have a data type. So incident type is ABC. So that means it's a text field. And then location, that's text as well. And then the borough. Uh, so you might think that's a geographic field, but Tableau doesn't understand boroughs. So we're gonna have to just leave that as it is for now. Now it looks like we also have some things that aren't boroughs. So for example, this one says New York, and then we have one called Far Rockaway. I've never heard of that. Um, and then we move over to the next column, which is creation date. And you see, it looks like it's a date time type of of uh, structure and we want to make sure we change it to that so i'm going to click where the where the abc is and you're going to get this list of data types 
let's change it to date and time. So it should be the third option down. And Tableau will automatically convert every one of those columns, or sorry, every one of those rows into a date time field for you. Now we wanna use date time fields here instead of a string because we wanna be able to split off the different parts of the date. So for example, we may wanna look at the data by day, uh, by, by month and day or by year and month or something like that. Tableau automatically understands the way that days, the hierarchy of dates. This close date column, it doesn't look like that really has anything useful in it. So I'm gonna click on the little triangle on the upper right of that column. And I'm gonna choose the third option down, which says hide. So basically we're just saying we're not interested in that column. We have our latitude and longitude and notice these both have globes. That means they're geographic fields. And if I click on that and go down to geographic role, you'll see it's already set up to be latitude. So Tableau picked up the name of the field and um, chose it and, and set it to a latitude geographic field. The same for, for longitude. And now on the right-hand side where we split up this incident type, they're just called split one and split two. So let's give those names. So I'm going to click, or actually click the triangle next to that first column. So again, select the column that says incident type split one. Click the triangle that's on the upper right of that column. And we're gonna choose rename. And for simplicity, I'm gonna call that category. I'm going to then highlight the last column, the one that says incident type split two. Click that little triangle again, and then choose rename. And let's call this one, um, I'll just call it maybe, uh, let's call it subcategory, just because I like using Tableau's Superstore dataset. Now, if you're curious to see how all this calculation is built, you'll notice it says equals ABC for the data type. That the equal sign means it's a calculation, and it's a calculation that's resulting in a string. So that's why it says equals ABC. If we want to see how that calculation is built, we can click on that triangle again and choose edit. <clears throat> and this is kind of what, tab well, this is what Tableau did for us when we chose that split option. So it's trimming off the, it's looking at that incident type field. It's looking for a hyphen, and then it's splitting off the, uh, the, the second item from that string. So what that means is, the reason that this other one, uh, so here where it was, I think it was 1076, we've told Tableau, just keep the first uh, and second times that you see a hyphen. So for this particular field, in this calculation, what Tableau has done is it said, okay, uh, when you get to the second hyphen, grab that part of the string, but if there's a third one, ignore it, and then hit okay. So now that we have that category and subcategory, we are, I think we're good to go. So uh, let's click on, oh, Maggie, get down. Sorry, the dog is climbing on my lap. Maggie, get down. And let's click on sheet one on the bottom left. And now we should be in Tableau's Canvas. So if any of you have used um, pivot tables in Microsoft Excel, this is very similar to that. So on the left-hand side, we have our data pane, and you'll see the word data on the upper left, and there's two tabs, data and analytics. So data is where all of our columns reside. At the top section is our data source, so emergency response incidents. In the tables section, this is split up into blue fields and green fields. So blue things are ways that we split up our view, and green things are ways that we count our view. And then we have all these sections on the right-hand side. So we have columns here, we have rows, and then we have pages and filters, and then marks. Each of those are called shelves. So we have the column shelf, the row shelf, pages shelf, filter shelf, and then we have the color shelf, size shelf, text shelf, et cetera. So shelves are places where you can drop fields. So think of them as, think of shelves like a bookcase. You're gonna take fields and you're gonna put them wherever you want them in the bookcase. So the first thing I wanna know is how many incidents are there? Down here in the third, or sorry, the second field from the bottom, 
it should be a field that says emergency response in italics. So this is just our counting field. Um, so let's take that field and just drag it on to where it says text on the marks card. So just drop it on there. And we see we have 11,265 incidents. So I'll pause there for a minute. Nathan, are there any questions so far that I need to stop and look at? Question, Andy, about problem splitting the field. Um, okay. But I'm guessing okay, that so option isn't always available to some users. Is that maybe because of the version they're using? There's just a uh, no, it Andy, there's just a question as to whether Tableau Public has the split function. I'm just trying to download uh, it now to see. I haven't got it installed. But... Yes, Tab Tableau Public will definitely have that function. That's what I thought. Uh, so in this incident type field, again, hit the triangle. And if you're unsure uh, how to do the custom split, just choose split. And Tableau will, will, it might split it off into more than two columns, but that's okay. But you want to choose custom split and then put in a hyphen and the first two columns. Okay, but I, I don't see why it wouldn't have that because all of the functions that are in Tableau public are the same as Tableau. The only difference is the types of data sources you can connect to. Anything else? That's good for now, okay. Andy. So we have 11,265 incidents. So this might be a nice, uh, you know, big number for us to include at the beginning, sort of setting the stage for us. So I'm gonna click on the text button again. And we now have these two options. One says text and one says alignment. So in the alignment section, I want it to be centered. So in the horizontal section, choose center. And then click on alignment again and set the vertical to center. Now it doesn't look like it did anything yet, but uh, it's because we haven't made this, we haven't made the fields bigger. After that, click on the three dots next to where it says text. And then just click somewhere in that gray section where that field is. And let's change the font size to something like, I don't know, maybe 48, something really big. And I'm gonna maybe make it bold and then hit okay. And now we have 11,265 incidents. Great. Okay, so we like this sheet. So on the bottom left, where it says sheet one, where it has the sheet name, I'm gonna just double click on that and I'm gonna rename it, how many? So I like putting these in the form of questions as we go across. So we now know how many. So let's talk about, well, when did these incidents happen? Down next to the sheet that says how many, there's another little button uh, or another little sheet tab. And if you hover over it, it should say new worksheet. So click on that sheet. And what we want to look at now is the trend in the number of incidents. Take the creation date field, and I want you to just drag that to the columns shelf. You should see a little orange triangle when you drop it into the column shelf. Let go of your mouse. And now you can see we have data from 2011 through 2022. Okay, great. And we wanna see this over uh, as it may be a line chart over time. So let's grab that emergency response field that's in italics again. So this is just counting the number of rows in the data set. And let's drag that to the rows shelf. And you can see now we have, uh, we've got incidents uh, going from 2011 to 2022. It looks like uh, between 2019, 20, and 21, the incidents reduced. And then 2022 is so low because they, we just not a complete year yet. So maybe we wanna look at this as quarterly data. On the year field, on the columns, you'll see a little plus button. I want you to click on that plus button. And now we can see the data at the quarterly level. Okay, it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. It just looks like somebody scribbled on my screen. So let's maybe look at the data monthly. Click on the plus next to quarter, and now we see some monthly data. And again, it's just kind of taking that scribbly data and, and spread it out even more. 
but it looks kind of messy. So on the column shelf, I want you to click on the quarter field so that it's, it should become like a darker blue and then just drag it up to take it off the view. Okay, so now we've got something that looks a bit better. <clears throat> but I can't see the whole trend over time. If you scroll left to right, you'll see uh, it doesn't all fit in one screen. So to fix that, above where month is on the column shelf, you'll see the word standard. So this is how we fit the, how we fit the chart into the view. So click on that word standard and let's choose entire view, the fourth option. And that's gonna force all of the months to be on the data set at, the, or sorry, in the view at the same time. Okay. If you look at the very right hand side of this, you'll see 2022 only has January in it. So let's see, no, I'm sorry, it has January and February. But we probably don't want to include that in our analysis because it's not a complete year. And maybe we should also exclude 2011 because that only has, what, um, eight months in it. Okay, so to do that, let's drag the creation date field to the filters. Now you have this filter field, uh, this filter field screen that pops up. Choose the third option down, which is years. And then click on the next button. You should now see all of the years listed in the, in the, uh, that are in the data set. I'm going to uncheck 2011. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and uncheck 2022. So it should now say we've selected 10 of the 12 values in that summary section at the bottom. And click on OK. All right, so now we just have 10 complete years of data. That seems a bit more reasonable to me. I like how we have the same, uh, the same number of months in each year, so we're, our data is completely covered. We want this filter to apply to the entire data set. So in our how many sheet, it says 11,265, but that includes all of the years. So we need to make sure that this 11,265 also applies this year filter. And when we create any more sheets, we wanna also make sure that year is, is included, or the, sorry, those, those 2011 and 2022 are excluded. So on the year field, that's on the filters shelf. So the one where we just put the filters, click the little triangle when you hover over that blue field. And then the sixth option down says apply to worksheets. In that section, choose the second option down that says all using this data source. What that means is any charts that you create based on that data source are going to automatically have this filter applied. If we now go back to our how many sheet, you'll see it change from 11 to 65 to 10,636. Great, so our filter is applied there and you can see that field on the filter shelf for you. So we have our monthly trend but I don't particularly like how these lines are all split up. So we got 2012 as a single line and then 2013 as a separate line, et cetera. I wanna make these just one continuous line going left to right. <clears throat> so let's change that by clicking on the month field on the columns. And you'll see about halfway down that there's a check mark next to month. What that's returning for us is the name of the month. So the part of the month that represents the name. What we're interested in doing now is looking at the month and the year together. So we just get one continuous line. So a few more options down from the one that's checked, you'll see another month field or another month option that says May 2015. Choose that option. And you'll see our month field became green on the columns. That's okay. 
But now we can get rid of this year field. So on the column shelf, click on year and drag that up off the view. And now you should have one continuous line. So I'll pause there for a second and let me know when I should move on, Nathan. Yeah, this is looking bad. I think the only question. issue was that Tableau Public, Andy, doesn't allow you to split in the same way as you did it. You've got to do it from the data pane rather than the data source. Oh, okay. So okay, where, but they're where... sorted out now? I think so, yeah. I think we've got there, okay. so I think most people are fine. But yeah, if you just right-click okay. on a on any... Um, yeah, can you transform and then split yeah. from there? Yeah, yeah if you right-click on the incident type field here, you can go down to transform yeah. and custom split. I so same that... option there. I'm surprised they don't have that in the data. No, as yeah, well. a bit odd. But no, everything seems fine up to that point, Andy. Okay, great. So this is telling, you see, we kind of have this almost like upside down. Uh, it's almost like a hill upside down new, but there's no real pattern to this data so far. So let's go to this analytics pane. So on the upper left hand side, we have our data sources or we have our, um, our list of fields. There's a tab called data across the top, which I pointed out a minute ago. And next to that, there's a tab called analytics. What I want to know is what is the average, what is the monthly average across the whole view? So in this analytics pane, good. Oh, there's an average line option. That's the second one down within that little summarized section. I want you to just double click on average line. And now we can see the average across the entire time period. If you hover over that, it's 88.6 incidents per month. Okay, great. That adds a bit of context for us, right? So we know we started out, uh, you know, mostly below the average until we got to about 2016. And then pretty consistently above the average until recently when it's come back down. So maybe that's COVID related. Down on the bottom left now, double click where it says sheet two, and we're gonna rename this sheet to, this is our monthly incidents. So just rename that sheet monthly incidents. And you'll notice on the sheet, the title changed automatically as well. But I find this particular chart hard to get any insights from. So we're gonna try a couple of other charts and see if we can find something more interesting. Down on the bottom, next to the title that we just changed, monthly incidents, click on the new sheet button. And we're gonna look at a heat map to see if we can see any trends maybe by month and year that way instead of through the line chart. So drag the creation date field to the columns and you'll see it says years. We have our years going left to right again and then drag the creation date to the rows. And you'll also see years there, that's okay for now. You should just see this nice little diagonal of ABCs. But on the row shelf, on the year field that's on the row shelf, click on the little triangle and we wanna choose month. So right now year is checked and we wanna choose month, the, the month that has the word May next to it. So click on that and we get this nice little table so this tells us because there's ABCs everywhere, you can tell there's data in every single month and year. So whenever you see an ABC, that means there's data. If there was a hole here somewhere, so let's say March of 2016, it didn't say ABC was just blank. That would mean that there's no incidents reported for that month. Let's now take that emergency response field. So the one that uh, is counting the data and drag that onto the color shelf. So you should see a little button that says color. So drop it onto there. And we now get a heat map. All right. And again, this isn't really telling us a whole lot. We've taken the same data we had before, the line chart, and we just turned it into a heat map. I was hoping that maybe it would reveal something different, but it doesn't. And that's perfectly okay. That's part of our process. Let's rename this sheet as, um, let's call this monthly heat map. Let's see, uh, or maybe month and year heat map.
Nathan, remind me um, how long we're supposed to go. Till seven uh, our time. Minutes, something like that. Yeah, okay. or just before. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. fine. Another half an hour. Okay. Okay, great. All right, but I think what I want to look at instead, since I don't see any patterns here, I'm curious to know if the time of day matters. I want you to right click on that cheat name at the bottom, the one we just renamed, and choose the duplicate option. Don't choose duplicate as cross tab, just choose the option that says duplicate. And that's going to make a copy of that sheet, or it's going to duplicate. On the column shelf, Click the triangle next to the year field. And where you go down a couple more options to where it says more. And then choose hour. This is going to give us the hour of the day from uh, from zero to or sorry, from is it zero to 20. Yeah, from zero to 23. All right, and now we get something that looks a bit. So now we're looking at the data by time of day. But I want to make sure that this fits the view. So you see, we have to scroll right now. Let's change the fit at the top. So click on standard, where the, where the word standard is, and choose fit width. Oops, I chose fit height. So choose fit width. And we get something like that. Again, I'm not seeing any particular patterns here. Uh, so I, I don't think it's going to prove particularly useful to us. Okay. I want to try something though. We know that the average is 80, 88 or 89, 88.6. So on this new sheet that we created, I'm going to click on the color shelf or the, the little color button. And I'm going to choose edit colors. When this edit colors window comes up, underneath the palette, it says automatic. I'm going to click on that option and I'm going to change it to orange, blue, diverging. So it's about, about 10 options down, orange, blue, diverging. Now, typically, you'll only use a two color palette. Or so this one is scaling from one color into gray, into the other color, if you have a natural midpoint in the data. So typically you only use this if you have some negative numbers and then some positive numbers. But I'm gonna set my middle to be the average that we saw in the other sheet. So to do that, we wanna click on this advanced button. And when we click on that advanced button, then choose the option, put a check mark next to center. Ignore start and ignore end. I want you to check center. And then instead of 60 in there, let's put 88.6. It might round it. Let's just choose 89. So type in 89. Again, I'm assuming 89. We're just looking at kind of above and below average. So below average would be good. Above average would be bad. However, my color palette is backwards because I, we, if we have a high number incidents, I would think that is bad. And I associate the orange to be uh, a bad color rather than blue. So I see blue is a more positive color and red is a more negative color. We have these check boxes in the middle. One says stepped colors, one says reversed, and one says useful color range. I want you to check the box that says reversed. So that's just gonna flip them around. and then choose OK. Right, and that was completely pointless. It didn't really tell us anything. So I had high hopes that this would be useful, but it wasn't. That's OK. It's not very useful, so I'm going to switch it back to be a single color. Up on the upper left, you'll see the little Tableau symbol. And then next to that, you'll see an undo button, a leftwards pointing arrow. So click on that arrow, and we're back to just our single color palette, and we pretend like this never happened. So nobody knows that we didn't like the other chart. This one's definitely better than the one with multiple colors. Let's rename the sheet. So at the sheet name at the bottom, let's call this month and hour heat map. So 
So it doesn't look like there's much of a relationship between the month and the hour, but I still want to see if there's other relationships in the data. So let's duplicate this sheet again, right click on the sheet name and choose duplicate. So let's say we want to compare maybe the month, we'll leave the months down the left, but instead of it being the hour across the top, let's say we want it to be the weekday. On the column shelf, where the hour field is, click on the triangle. And right now you should see more and then hour checked. So hover over that again. And you wanna change that to weekday. Right, and the view looks very, very stretched, like kind of fat. So I'm gonna change it from fit width back to standard. So it should look more like a kind of regular style heat map. So we're looking, so it looks like we have a bit of an outlier here, right? On Thursdays in July, those look like the biggest, uh, the biggest areas. Saturdays and Sundays look like they're probably the quietest times. I'm gonna rename this sheet as month and weekday heat map. Let's try one more heat map. So I want you to duplicate this sheet again. And I wanna look at, I'm gonna leave weekday here across the view, but I want to change the month field to be hour of the day. On the row shelf, where the month field is, click on the triangle. Uh, the, the first month option that has the word May should be checked. Go to the second option below that, which is more, and choose hour. Okay, so now this looks a bit better. It looks like we have um, Thursdays at 7 a.m. for some reason is a, is a hot spot. But then it looks like we kind of have basically working hours. It kind of looks like maybe eight to, from, from eight o'clock to about 4 p.m. It looks like there's during the week. So we've kind of have this little cluster here of hours that look a bit more interesting. So I'd say this one's more interesting than the other view. So let's maybe leave this one the way it is. But we could also flip it. So I'm curious to know if we put the hours going left to right and the weekdays down the side, so basically just switching them around, what does that do? So uh, above the word columns on the column shelf, you should see this, uh, this little option that has this kind of curved arrow on it. And this is going to swap the rows and the columns. So let's click on that option. And let's make the view, let's try entire view this time and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's not very good. Okay. So I don't think that looks particularly good. So I'm gonna hit undo and that's gonna switch it back to standard view. And we're gonna hit undo again and that's gonna switch the weekday and the hour back around. Okay, great. So let's call this one um, hour, let's see, hour and weekday heat map. So I think this is the one I like the best so far out of these different uh, time series kind of views that we've created. So I'm gonna right click on that sheet tab and I'm gonna color, I'm gonna choose color and then let's maybe pick red just so it, it kind of sticks out to us. So this is an indication for me that this is something that I like. I also like my big number. So I'm gonna go back over to the how many sheet and I'm gonna color that one red as well. It just helps me uh, when I go to build my dashboard, think about the sheets that I wanna put on there. So we've covered how many and we covered the heat map that shows us the um, uh, the hours and the weekdays. Let's create another new sheet now, and let's look at the incidents per borough. Let's drag the borough field to the rows, and let's drag the, the count to the columns. 
And it looks like we've got kind of a mess here. So we, we see we've got Bronx spelled about 10 different ways. Brooklyn is like three ways, citywide. You've got a bunch that aren't even boroughs. Manhattan is spelled about 10 different ways, et cetera. So I don't think this is gonna be particularly useful to us because the, the borough names just are, they're just too messy to work with. I could show you how to group them together, but I think that's probably gonna take us too much time given the, the amount of time that we have remaining. So I'm gonna click undo and then undo again, and that gets us back to a blank sheet. Let's start that analysis then of looking at the categories and the subcategories. Drag the category field to the rows shelf. And let's put that count field that we've been using onto the columns. And you'll see a majority of the incidents or the, the most incidents are related to fire. I wanna sort these so I can see uh, a bit better what they, uh, which uh, sort of ranking them. Above the column shelf, you'll see some sorting icons. I wanna choose the one that is sorting descending. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. If I want some labels on the ends of the lines as well, I can click on the T that is on the, uh, on the, the toolbar. It's two to the left of where we have the word standard. So I'm just gonna click on that T and now we can see the number of incidents within each category. Okay, and if we wanna see the category broken down by subcategory, we can drag that subcategory field to the rows as well. So I'm gonna put it to the right of the category field. And now you'll see we have tons and tons and tons of subcategories. So within fire itself, we have 48 different subcategories. I don't think that's gonna probably be particularly useful given how many there are. So let's hit undo and we'll end up just using the category field instead of the subcategory. While we're here, let's do a bit of cleanup. You'll see we have the labels on the ends of the bars, so we don't need the axis. So I want you to right click on the axis at the bottom. It should turn blue and then uncheck the option that says show header. And now that axis is gone. We also don't need all of these grid lines. Right click anywhere in the chart and choose the format option. You should now see format uh, on, the, on the left-hand side or a little format window. And you'll see a series of buttons there's an A and then there's an alignment, et cetera. I want you to choose the fifth one, the one that has the lines that are different sizes. And we wanna get rid of the grid lines. Notice how the grid lines, it says none. Well, there actually are grid lines there. So where it says none, I'm gonna click on it again. I'm gonna click on the word none. I'm gonna choose the second option down, which will turn the lines on. And then I'm gonna click on none again to turn them off. I don't know why it works that way when it says none, but anyway, it does. We also don't need the zero lines. So let's, in zero lines, let's choose none. And then we also have these light gray, you'll see this right light gray line going across from left to right. Those are our axis rulers. Where it says axis rulers, the second option from the bottom, click on the box and choose none. Great, so now we have a really nice clean view to work with. I'm gonna rename this sheet as um, uh, incidents uh, by type or uh, category actually, incidents by category. <clears throat> and I like that sheet that, that bar chart we've created. So I'm gonna right click on the sheet name and set the color to red. So now we have three things so far that we are probably going to put into our dashboard. <clears throat> we've covered how many, we've covered when, we've covered what, but we haven't yet covered where. I'm gonna create another new sheet and I wanna see every single incident on a map. 
to do that, I'm going to drag the latitude field up so that it's a dimension. So you just want to drag it up to maybe, uh, you know, kind of where it says create a date and then drag longitude up there as well. That's going to change them into dimensions. Uh, so the, the section at the top above this, uh, this gray line, those are dimensions. Those are things that split up the view. Double click on the word latitude and double click on the word longitude. And you're going to see we have something like this. Doesn't look quite right though, because we have all of these incidents over here. It looks like the problem actually with this one is that uh, it doesn't have, it should have a negative longitude, but we can't do anything about that. So if we right click on that field, we can choose exclude. So it's about the fifth option from the bottom. Okay. And there we go. So now we just see incidents <clears throat> that are uh, almost all within the borough. So we see this, this we kind of have this one outlier on the upper left. For me, the dots are overlapping a bit too much. So I'm going to change the size of the dots. <clears throat> click on the size shelf. So on the marks card here, click on the word size. I'm just going to drag that maybe halfway down from where it is now. <clears throat> and we can see the incidents a bit better. No surprise, most of the incidents are on the higher, uh, the, this, the areas of New York that are uh, more um, uh, concentrated with people. So this is one way that we can do the map. So let's call this, uh, let's rename the sheet all <clears throat> incident locations. I wanna try a couple of different map types though. So I'm gonna, let's create another new sheet, <coughs> excuse me. And then double click on latitude and double click on longitude and we have our map again. <clears throat> we can exclude that one point like we did before. So you wanna right click on that point that's in the, um, uh, on the right hand side and choose exclude. And we're back to just New York. Another way that we can sort of see the concentration of the incidents is to change the mark type. On the marks card, right now it says it has a circle and it says automatic. We're going to change this to a density map. Click on the word automatic and choose the very bottom option that says density. Oops, I chose polygon, choose density. And now we can see where the incidents are happening. It looks like just a cloudy sky though. So let's click on the, uh, maybe the size shelf again. And what if we reduce the size a bit? Does that open things up? So you can't really reduce it too much because otherwise it gets a bit harder to see. So let's go maybe halfway. What if we take it to the first tick mark? Yeah, let's make sure it's on that first tick mark. That looks pretty good. And then click on the color shelf. And in this colored legend that comes up, let's change it from automatic Let's maybe choose, um, Nathan, what color do you want me to choose here? How about, uh, should we do maybe density red dark? Should we try that? Oh, the black. Which one? A black. A black, um, we don't have a black one. You don't have the, um, I can't see what it's called. The... All okay, these ones go. at the bottom are ones that I created. Yeah, so okay, go. Yeah. go with your red one. <clears throat> Okay, let's choose density, red, dark, and see how that looks. Okay, oh, I chose orange. <laughs> let's choose, uh, where was it here? I lost it now. Doing that. Uh, let me hit undo. And then density, red, dark. There we go. That was weird that it chose orange. Okay, what do you think of that one? Is that good, Nathan? Is yeah, that, that, looks, that looks better. That looks good. Okay. But again, it's still you know, we, we still have just kind of these big blurs. So I'm gonna click on the size shelf again and maybe reduce, uh, I'm just gonna drag the size down a bit. Okay, I think that's a bit better now. But this helps us see the concentrations of the marks.
click on the color shelf again. And then the effects at the bottom, I want you to change the border to none. It's probably not gonna change anything, but I like to do it anyway. And then in the halo, set that to none. So I'm just trying to make sure that there's not any extra things being drawn. And what if we raise the intensity? Let's maybe put the intensity, there we go. How about if we put the intensity at, uh, let's try maybe 75%. All right, I think that looks better. Okay, great. I think we're okay with that. So this is our, uh, let's call this, um, would be a good name for this one. Let's call it, uh, ins uh, we could just call it incident map, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's called incident map. Or maybe just, maybe let's just call it density map so we remember what it is later. And then right click on that sheet. I like this one better than the other map. So I'm going to set the color to red. <clears throat> okay, we've got four sheets now. And I think I'm pretty happy with how my dashboard is coming together. Um, I'm gonna go back to our second sheet, the one that says monthly incidents. And I think it might be important to include this one along with maybe our heat map. Uh, no, let's not worry about that. We're not gonna build a dashboard. On the, uh, across the bottom where we have all of our different tabs, the second to the last tab, if you hover over that, it should say new dashboard. It looks like four squares with a plus sign. We'll click on that button and now we have our new dashboard window. I'm gonna leave the size the way it is. You can adjust the size if you want, if you wanna play around with the different sizes, but for now, I'm gonna leave it as it is. Okay, I want to, I'm going to go back to my data source and let's just see, it's called emergency response incidents. Okay, so down the very bottom on the left-hand side of the dashboard window, you'll see show dashboard title. So let's click on that uh, option and you'll see we now have a dashboard title at the top. Where the word dashboard one is, I'm going to just double click on that. And now we can change our title. So I'm gonna remove everything that's in there and I'm gonna type in emergency response incidents, incidents in New York, in New York City to be more explicit. Okay, so we have our title. What we need to do now is, to, is decide on our dashboard layout. So. Uh, you can just uh, you can just watch for now, and I'll show you how uh, we can go about sort of designing one. So I'm going to use a tool a tool called Excaladraw, and maybe we could send a link out. And I'm going to just create a some mock up of a dashboard. All right, I'm going to start with maybe just a uh, a rectangle here. So this is going to be my dashboard, and I'm going to put my title here. So this is my emergency response, incidents, incidents. Um, what's that cool font that uh, is the like, um, you know, the one I'm talking about, the one that looks like handwriting. Do you know how I get that one? Oh, finally, here we go, there we go. Okay, so we have emergency response incidents and I can maybe, yeah, it's an extra large font, good enough. Okay, so we have something like that. And the charts that we have to use we have, a, we have a number, so let's just go ahead and put a number in here. So I don't know what the number is, 10, I don't know, 836, whatever that number is. And then I'm gonna make this nice and big, and maybe that number just goes here underneath of that title. We then have, uh, let's see, what are the other fields we have? We have, our, uh, we have our heat map and our bar chart and our map. Okay, so on here on the right hand side, maybe that's where I'll stick my bar chart. So I'm going to just grab a bar chart. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll just grab this bar chart option here. And let's maybe stick that over here. This may end up not working out right, but we'll, we'll give it a shot anyway. And then we can, uh, let's see, what else can we, what else do we have? We have our map. And then we have our 
heat map. Okay, so the heat maps, I don't think I have a heat map option. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I don't have a heat map option. So I'm just gonna stick a placeholder here as like a stacked bar chart or something. And we'll put that here. And then maybe the map, maybe the map can go over here on the right. So I think for that one, I need to just draw something. So I know I'm gonna butcher the shape of New York, but we'll make it look like, sort of like a potato. So let's see if we can design a dashboard that looks like this. And if we don't like it, we can move the objects around. In our dashboard, let's start by bringing in that how many sheet. So on the left-hand side here where it says how many, just drag that underneath of the emergency, underneath of our title, you see a big gray box. So just drop that there. And you'll see it says uh, 10,676 and then how many. Okay, I'm happy with that. And we said to the right of that, we're going to put our, um, let's see, our, our bar chart. So scroll down to where we have, we called it incidents by category. And I'm gonna drag that sheet and I'm gonna put it to the right of the how many sheet. So you should see kind of a, a, a big gray section on the right hand side. So let's drop that there. All right, and then let's grab our heat map and let's put that underneath. So you, this is where it gets, starts to get a bit tricky. So let's grab our heat map and I'm gonna put it below the 10,676, or sorry, 10, the, our big number. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, density map and I'm gonna put that underneath of our incidents by category. So in a really simple four tiled, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a simple layout of four different sheets on here. Now on the right hand side, you'll see we have this color legend that came in. So below the color legend, I want you to just uh, click in the space below that and you should get this blue box around that. We don't really care to have our color legend on here. So I'm gonna click the X on that blue box and then I'm gonna choose delete containers. And now we just get a, a bit more room for our, for our charts here. In our heat map on the bottom left, you can see we have these scroll, these scroll options, which I don't think they look particularly good. So choose that sheet, just maybe just click where the title is one time. And uh, so it gets a gray box around it. and then choose the triangle that's on the right-hand side. You should see like an X and an arrow and a little funnel and then a down, a down triangle. So choose that down triangle and then choose fit and entire view. So it's gonna make that fit the view. I know it looks a bit ugly so far, we'll fix that. <clears throat> let's go over to our bar chart. So just click the white space in the bar chart and let's also set that one to fit the entire view. What I wanna do is I wanna to try to make my heat map a bit taller. So if I click on my heat map and I just hover over the top of it, you'll see I get an up and down arrow. If I drag that up a bit, so I'm gonna drag it so that it's up above, uh, below that number, it should make our heat map a lot taller. All right. Let's click on our how many sheet. So again, to put the gray border around that. And let's set it to, uh, let's set it to fit entire view. All right, I don't particularly love this, but uh, I think we'll, we'll leave it here for now anyway. Um, okay, I'm wondering if, uh, maybe next to this sheet, we should have maybe a small little line chart. So I wonder if we grab, uh, let's try this. <coughs> On the dashboard, within our sheet section, there's the monthly incident. So this is where we kind of just created that line chart that we put the average on. I want you to grab that sheet and I want you to put it, this is, again, it's gonna be a bit tricky. I want you to put it to the right of our big number. So it's, again, it's just gonna be like a small square so it should fit in between the big number and the bar chart. So something like that.
Okay. Doesn't look great, but we're just going to clean this up. So it's just this, you know, this tiny little bar, uh, sorry, this tiny little line chart that's just helping us see a trend over time. I want you to right click on the axis that's at the bottom of that line chart and uncheck show header. I then want you to right click on the axis on the left hand side and uncheck show header. So we're just trying to make this little line chart where we can see the trend a bit better. Right click in the white space of that line chart and choose format. And we're going to apply the same filter, uh, sorry, the same formatting we did to that bar chart. <clears throat> Choose the button across the top that is the, the one with the three lines. In the grid lines section, click the word none, and then click the solid line, and then click none again, and that's gonna get rid of our grid lines. Let's set our zero lines to none and then our axis rulers to none. So now we just have this nice clean little line chart. I think that looks a bit better. Okay, so let's do a bit more cleanup here. Click on your title at the top. So just so if you could just click on it once so it gets the gray bar, the bar around it. Go to the bottom of it so it turns into like a little up and down arrow. And I'm just gonna drag that down a bit just to give our, our title a bit more room. <clears throat> let's go, let's see. We're gonna clean up some of the sheets again. Down the bottom where we have all of our different sheet names, let's go to the how many sheet. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the word incidents below the big number. Click on the text shelf. And then in the three dots where it says text, this is where we set the font to 48. So let's maybe shrink that. So just click on it somewhere. This whole section should become blue. And I'm gonna change it to maybe, we don't probably need to be quite that big. So let's just set it to 28. And then after that field, hit the, hit the, uh, hit the carriage return or the enter key. And I'm just gonna type in the word, I'm gonna manually type in the word incidents. <clears throat> I'm gonna highlight that word, maybe unbold it and make it a smaller font, maybe something like 14, something like that. So again, we're just typing in the word incidents and then formatting it. Let's click apply and see how it looks. Okay, I think that looks better. This way it won't take up as much space. All right, so before I move on, Nathan, are there any questions? Questions in the chat, obviously explaining it absolutely perfectly, as expected, of course. Yeah, or they've all fallen asleep, one or the other. <laughs> no. There are okay. a few emojis with Zs coming out, though, firing your way. <laughs> I'm going to hit OK. And now if I go back to my dashboard, we see our incidents there. Where the word how many is, the, the, the title for that sheet. So right click where it says how many, and I'm gonna choose hide title because we don't really need the title in there if we know the number of incidents. <clears throat> Let's now clean up this monthly incidents sheet. On your tabs across the bottom, choose the one that has our monthly incidents and you'll see it's nice and clean right now. <clears throat> but the line was a bit hard for me to see because it was kind of all blurring together. So let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna change it to quarterly just to see what it looks like. So on our column shelf where it says month uh, the, in green, I want you to click on that drop down. And right now month is checked. I want you to check the quarter option that's right above it. And let's see how that looks on our dashboard now. Okay, I think that looks a bit better. And then maybe let's, uh, let's right click on the title for that one and let's hide that title as well. All right. 
we have our density map. Um, what else do we need to do here? Okay, on our heat map on the bottom left, uh, I'm gonna hide the title for that one as well. And you'll also see the word creation date above Thursday. So right click on the word creation date and let's choose hide field labels for columns. That's just gonna make it so we just see the, the, the weekday name and the hour. The hour column is, is quite wide though. So I'm gonna go to the very right edge of that, uh, that white column for the hours and you should get a left and right arrow. And I'm gonna drag that to the right till it gets kind of closer to one of those numbers. Something like that. Maybe I'll do it ever so slightly more than that so that I still see the word hour above zero. <clears throat> All right, um, let's see, what else should we do here? The, you'll notice, when, at least for me, Wednesday is cut off, so I'm gonna abbreviate these weekdays. Uh, let's click on the, right click on the word Wednesday. It's gonna end up highlighting that entire column, but right click on the word Wednesday and choose format. We can now format the way that that date looks. So in the dates section, you'll see the word Sunday. So click where it says Sunday and let's change it to abbreviation. And now it should just be, it should just say wed. I think this heat map has a bit too much space kind of left to right, it's a bit wide. So just choose anything in that sheet. It's gonna highlight it, but don't worry about that. <clears throat> And on the right hand, if you go to the right edge of that, of that sheet where you've got kind of the, the gray box that goes around that whole sheet, I want you to go to the right edge of that so it turns into a left right arrow and then click on that and just drag it over a bit. Okay, so I think that looks a bit better. Now it also gives us a bit more room for the map. Oh, Maybe not a quite question that much. Come in, okay, yeah. What a question about, would it be smart to match this color scheme across the different tiles? Yeah, we haven't gotten to that relevant? yet. Oh, right. Okay, so someone's yep. already. Yep. There we go. They're, they're, they're beating us to it. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, so we'll, we'll end up probably changing the map to be blue like the rest of it. Uh, okay, so, but now our line chart is pretty squished up. So I'm going to click on my line chart and I'm going to move that. I'm just going to drag the left edge of that just to give it a bit more breathing room. So I like how that section turned out. Um, we could probably, I wonder, Nathan, do you think we should go with more of a, just like a gray theme, like maybe a black theme for the whole thing? I know you mentioned that before. Uh, yeah, but is that kind of what you, what color do you think of when you think of emergency response or do you think of red? No, I think red shows a better difference. Okay. I don't think black is shows the, uh, it won't make the, those points in the density map stand out as well, will it? Okay. Okay. So let's go to, um, let's maybe, I think the, Let's see the bar chart. I think that looks okay. Um, I'm gonna maybe right click on the word category that's above fire. And I'm gonna hide the field labels for the rows. Again, just trying to give us a bit more room. I'm gonna right click on the title for the density map and I'm gonna hide the title. So again, giving our map a bit more room to breathe now as well. Okay. So now let's go back and fix uh, some of our formatting. So we're gonna go with the red theme. Down the bottom, choose the sheet that says how many. <clears throat> Click on the text button. Choose the three dots next to the word text. And then again, just click somewhere in this, uh, this first field so the whole thing becomes blue. Click on the color and then let's make it red. Oh, I think I chose the wrong red. Yeah, we'll just make it red and hit OK. <coughs> All right, and then go over to the next sheet, which is our, this is actually our quarterly incidents now. So let me go ahead and rename that sheet to quarterly incidents, just so I don't get confused later on. I'm going to click on the color button, and I'm going to choose that same color red.
Okay, what was next? The, the heat map, the hour and weekday heat map. <clears throat> Again, let's click on the color shelf and then choose edit colors. And in the palette, let's change it to, we don't have, uh, yeah, we don't have the density ones here, do we? No, let's just choose, uh, let's see, let's choose red. So it should be the fourth option down and hit okay. So now that's, oh, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? All right, let's go to our incidents by category. Again, click on the color button and choose red. <clears throat> and then go to our density map and let's see if we can find a color that has red in it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna click on the color button again. And in my color list, so this is going density red dark. Okay, so that one doesn't really work for us for what we're trying to do here. Um, what if we chose about density gray, red, light? Let's see what that looks like. Oh, what do you think of that? Too light? Yeah, too light on the grays. Too light? Mm, I think so. Okay, not let's think. try something else then. Let's try, what if we just choose red? What does red look like? Okay, that's not that's not too bad. Maybe we should just stick with that. Yeah, that's better. Let's see. What are the density ones here? If we do orange light, that's yeah, that's too the, the colors are just too light. Uh, what's this one? The multicolor. We don't want that. Yeah, I'm just gonna choose, let's just choose red for now. Maybe what does red gold look like? Nope. Okay, yeah, just choose red. And let's go back over to our dashboard. Now everything should be kind of red themed. <clears throat> we now have our dashboard built and we can add a bit of interactivity to it. I want you to click on the, uh, the sheet that has the bar chart. And on that sheet, you see we have the gray border on the right hand side, you'll see this option that looks like a funnel. <coughs> Excuse me. Click on that option. And it didn't do anything. But if I click on one of the categories now, like fire, you're going to see all of the other charts update based on that category. If I want to know, you know, where have rescues been, I can then see when rescues occurred. If I want to see, you know, hazmat situations, when did those occur? and where did they occur? Um, let's try the same thing for the heat map. So just click somewhere in the heat map <clears throat> and click the funnel for that one. So now you see we have this massive spike in uh, quarter three of 2018 at seven in the morning on uh, some Thursday. So there must've been some kind of big incident there. All right, I'm gonna click off that again. But the good thing about this is I can either click on a particular cell or let's say I wanna I want to filter the other charts to 12 o'clock. So I can just click on the number 12 and now there were 641 incidents that occurred between 12 and 1 p.m. Let's click on our line chart and let's choose the funnel for that. Now this is going to allow us to filter down to a particular quarter. So let's say I click on the dot on the end. So this is now telling us when the incidents occurred. So there are 191 incidents, in, or sorry, 197 incidents in the last quarter of 2021. And then if I wanted to know, okay, so there's 110 of those are fire. So now I'm gonna click on fire and we could, and, and those are now a combination. I have a combination of fire incidents that occurred in quarter four of 2021. And then to reset, I just click off of the off of the marks that I selected. All right, I think the other thing we probably maybe need to clean up is the title for this bar chart. Um, I think uh, I, I think it's kind of implicit that these are categories. So I'm just gonna hide the title for that one as well. I'm gonna right click on where it says incidents by category and choose hide title. <clears throat> uh, 
Let's give our dashboard a name now. So on the bottom, well, we can just leave it called dashboard one, I guess. Don't forget to save your work now. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, make sure you click save and then save it somewhere. So wherever you want to save it, but we should have been saving along the way probably. So I'm going to call this one emergency response. I'm just going to give it the same name response. Incidents in New York City. I'm going to give it a nice descriptive name and hit OK or save. In order to publish this up to Tableau Public, though, I need to uh, create what's called an extract. So we need to almost, it's like an offline copy of the data. So just go to any of your sheets. I'll just go to the first one, the how many. <clears throat> and we need to right click where it says emergency response incidents. You need to right click on that data source. And you wanna choose extract data. So about the, what, three, the seventh item down. Okay, and you'll see here, because we, we, we chose to make that year fill to apply to everything that uses that data source, Tableau automatically picks that up and says, you know what, I'm just gonna take them out of this extract that we create. I'm okay with that, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Click the extract button on the bottom right, and it asks you where to save it. And on your, the name of your data source in the upper left, you should see two little cylinders now with a, with a blue check mark. So two cylinders look like two database icons. Go back to your dashboard and now let's go ahead and publish this up to Tableau Public. To do that, we're gonna choose the server option at the top. I think for those of you that are using Tableau Public, I think you have to save it to Tableau Public anyway, I believe. But for those of you that are using Tableau Desktop, uh, click on the server option on the menu, go down to Tableau Public, and then choose Save to Tableau Public. <clears throat> All right, and then it's gonna pop up in a browser window. And I would encourage you to allow people to download your work. So I'm on the upper, oops, my view is, um, on the upper right-hand side, you'll see this little gear icon. So click on that gear. And I wanna show that on my profile. So I'm gonna click that little option to turn that on. The second option where it says show sheets. I, I don't wanna show all the different tabs we created. I only wanna show the dashboard. So I'm gonna leave that turned off. And then the allow access allows other people to download it or make a copy of it. So if you want other people to be able to learn from it, um, yeah, go ahead and choose that option. And that's, that's what we have for this evening or this, I guess, lunchtime for you all.